What is DeFi? As you could have already guessed, the crypto world is not fond of middlemen. All those lawyers, notaries, mediators, and bank accountants seem totally dispensable to blockchain users. The giant ledgers have by now allowed the direct connections and transactions between two parties through the crypto coins and smart contracts. But that was just the beginning. So here comes the DeFi. And what exactly is the DeFi? A lot of things. The abbreviation DeFi stands for Decentralized Finances. That's an umbrella term which covers a wide range of applications working on blockchain. But what's connecting them? Their decentralized nature and financial purposes. They are also united by the idea of changing the world's rules about money moving from one person or bank account to another. Decentralized finances are about taking traditional financial products such as insurances, trading securities, landing and borrowing into the crypto, leaving the middlemen out of the picture. Since DeFi products are so diverse, it might be easier to understand them one by one. So let's have a quick review of some projects considered as decentralized finances. Decentralized exchanges are a new type of cryptocurrency exchange which operate without any central authority. They allow users to make direct peer-to-peer -peer transactions by executing orders through automated smart contracts. The clients at any point don't have to transfer custody of their funds to a third party, unlike in centralized exchanges. Most DEXs don't require users to go through Know Your Customer process, adding anonymity to other benefits of decentralized trade. If you'd like an example, take a look at Uniswap or Bancor. Lending platforms are offering crypto loans with lenders and borrowers interacting directly. One can get a loan in fiat money, giving crypto coins as collateral, or otherwise get a handful of cryptocurrency with fiat collateral. Another option is to borrow some crypto coins, providing other crypto coins as guarantee. Anyway, on a lending platform, a lender gets his interest, usually higher than anywhere else, and the borrower can get hold of desired currency without actually selling his crypto assets. Some of the most well-known platforms allowing lending and borrowing are Maker, Aave, and Compound. Stablecoins backed by other cryptocurrencies are also considered as DeFi. The lack of connection with traditional financial systems make them truly decentralized and universal. In their case, stability is achieved by over-collateralization. DeFi stablecoins such as DAI, SAI, or SUSD can be used as a safe asset or made to work in other DeFi applications. Prediction markets or betting platforms allow people to bet on the outcome of different events. The concept is not new. Centralized prediction markets exist already for a couple of decades. At the core of this idea is the wisdom of the crowd. If a lot of people bet on something, their bets will quite accurately predict the event's outcome. The more the better. DeFi has placed prediction markets on a whole new level, allowing people from all over the world to place their bets independently and anonymously. Want to place a bet on Bitcoin's price? Check Augur Platform or Nasus Protocol. Insurance products have also found their niche in the world of decentralized finances. When it comes to money, no matter fiat or crypto, one wants to have some protection against hackers or price falls. Large crypto exchanges usually offer such insurances, but once again, they are centralized crypto. DeFi insurance protocols let anyone buy or provide coverage for smart contracts failure, exchange hacks, crypto loan collaterals drops, and a number of other unpleasant events. So far, this type of DeFi application is still emerging, but the perspective looks appealing. This list is not complete, as the range of DeFi products becomes wider and wider every couple of months. Payment systems, no-loss lotteries, e-wallets, you name it. What do they have in common besides the idea of making financial products decentralized? First of all, they use smart contracts allowing secure transactions without intermediaries. Next, most of them are built on Ethereum blockchain. And last but not least, they are still immature, but on the rise right now. Where does such a hot interest in DeFi come from? DeFi products are booming and blooming since 2020. At the end of last year, the numbers were astonishing. Transaction volume of decentralized applications, about 95% of them are DeFi, went from 21 to $270 billion. The value locked in the DeFi ecosystem rose from $700 million to $2.5 billion and 2021 has no signs of slowing down. Interested why? 
The pandemic had its effect on the crypto world too, although this time a positive one. Global interest rates have dropped low and investors have started to look for other markets. Add to this that crypto DeFi has quite low entry requirements and offers a high level of privacy. No wonder DeFi got a bunch of new clients. Another reason is that traditional financial institutions, such as banks, have shown great interest in DeFi. For a lot of investors, this is a good omen and sometimes an imperative to follow their steps. Are there any downsides? Yes, and quite a lot. Don't forget that we are talking about a new crypto sector, which is very promising, but still in its diapers. Users of DeFi applications may fear smart contract failures due to code laws, delayed and expensive transactions due to low blockchain scalability. Collateral may lose its value and hackers are keeping a close eye on theft possibilities. Plus, the world of DeFi may seem nice and easy with all those user-friendly applications, but let's face it, you've got to be a pro to profit. So don't shoot from the hip, do your own research and stay safe and rich. That's all for today's video. I hope you find it interesting and helpful. Let me know what you think about the DeFi in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any of our new videos.